Bu. I believe I am live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Rebecca Pebble. I'll do a little bit more of an introduction in a moment, but before I get started, if you are familiar with my live streams, which I've done two already, this is, this is act three, I'd like to start with some breath work. I find that it helps center me, hopefully it helps center you, and hopefully it brings you into your heart space. So, ah, I have one. I want, I bet that's Alex. Hello, my solo viewer, welcome. We're going to do some breath work before we get started because I find that's a good way to center yourself. So if you want to join me, um, you can close your eyes and we'll take three deep breaths. Um, and if you want to do the straw breathing technique that I did in the meditation live, you're more than welcome to do that. And the only difference between that and just breathing out normally is you purse your lips and when you exhale, you breathe out like you're breathing through a straw. So we'll start with that. All right, everybody. So go ahead and close your eyes and take a deep breath in and let that go. All right, another deep breath in and let that go. And one more deep breath in and let that go. All right, welcome everybody to the live stream about the importance of the arts and laughter, two of my favorite, favorite, favorite things in the world. And so just a quick introduction. I don't want to go too much into my pedigree. Uh, <laughs> not that I'm much of one. But I am Rebecca Pebble, and you can find all my, my stuff on RebeccaPebble.com um, to see what I do. I studied theater at Stetson and I graduated in 2007. I went on to get my master's in theater at Bowling Green State University and I've performed in different venues since. I am also a writer and a painter and a performer, a musician, a singer, um, an improviser. So I love, if there is a creative medium that I can tap into, I will at least try it. So. Um, I'm excited to talk to some fellow artists today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So if you wouldn't mind telling me if you're here, who you are, maybe if you are a fellow artist, or if you are more of a consumer or appreciator of art, or if you do both like me. So I um, kind of want to see where everyone's coming from. I like these lives to be more interactive than a sage on a stage, so me just talking to you. I feel like you guys have a lot of experience and knowledge and so whatever you can bring to the table is greatly appreciated too. So let your voice be heard. Um, yeah, and I think because some of the stuff I'll discuss, especially, especially once I get into different books, they're more geared towards artists themselves and um, some things to inspire you. So if my audience isn't all artists, um, that might not be the route I need to take. Uh, so, so to get us started, I want to, oh, and something I do want to, okay. <laughs> I do want to say that because I'm so passionate about this topic, I did take notes like I've been doing for these live streams, but I just want to go ahead and tell you, I'll probably go off the rails because um, I am just, I'm so, so passionate about this topic. So hopefully I can stay on track. <laughs> So I did want to mention, so if you see me glancing down and glancing at my notes, um, some notable alumni or some uh, people from Stetson that are doing the thing. And so um, I know we have some alumni like Ted Cassidy was Lurch in the Adams Family. I don't know. I didn't realize that until recently. That's super duper cool. And um, we also have... There's a, an off-Broadway musical called Titled Show, and Jeff Bowen was one of the writers. It's, if, if anyone, if you haven't heard of it, please look up Titled Show. It is an awesome four-person musical, and he is a Stetson alum. And I also encourage you guys to check out um, Andy Films. They are, uh, Brendan and Will both went to Stetson, and they actually work from DeLand and create a lot of parody videos that are on YouTube and doing really well. 
So those are just some off the top of my head. Um, I know a lot of people are in orchestras and composing a lot of musicians from Stetson, which is so beautiful. And um, everyone's all over doing their thing. So if you are an artist, let us know what you're up to and how we can support you because I think it's important too to get plugged in and to support each other's creations. I think that's really important. So why the arts and why now and laughter too i i try to smush them together um, i think of course they're always important but i want the main takeaway for today to be that art is essential art is essential i know we don't really think of it that way and a lot of times it's the first thing to get cut um, it's something we think, oh, that's nice, and maybe it sort of helps the human condition by helping us feel good, but it's so much deeper than that. I don't think we should just be striving to exist. We need to look at quality of life, and art helps to enhance that for sure. I'm going to make sure that I haven't gotten any comments yet. I don't think so. I don't see any. Okay, because I have... <laughs> I'm learning as I do these lives, I have a terrible tendency to not check the comments and people are saying really wonderful things and then I just pass them, them pass them by. So, uh, yes. Oh, 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 I told you I was going to be all over the place. I want to show you the shirt I almost wore and if you can guess the movie this is from, you get bonus points. This was given to me by my writer friend and our novel should be coming out soon. We're making some last minute tweaks, but stand by because it is a comedy. It's a romantic comedy. But this, I almost wore this. Is butter a carb? Anyone know the movie? <laughs> but I decided to wear my, wear, wore my, wore my, I decided to wear my painting uh, Hobbit uh, outfit today. Just cause. Uh, anyone know, is butter a carb? That's a quote from a movie that came out early 2000s comedy. I wanna say early 2000s. Any guesses? Okay, I will tell you. It's Mean Girls, which is a great, which is a great movie. So back, back to the topic at hand. So the arts. Of course, it's important to have a creative expression and an outlet. But I think sometimes we forget that it helps us develop empathy, um, especially as an actor, when you get to sort of embody the egos of different human beings it's really cool because then you can sort of that's the whole thing is you're always thinking about objectives and motives um, and so as you're breaking down scenes you're really getting into the psyche of another person and you can see where even if they seem unsympathetic maybe to the audience if you're embodying that human as an actor you empathize with their position, so whatever they do to you, it's justified, right? Because sort of like Thanos and the Avengers, if you are Thanos, you are doing this. You have a good cause, a good reason for <laughs> destroying everything. Um, so I think I think it's important to be able to get inside and to feel what other people are feeling, and the arts help us to do that and to get in tune with ourselves, which is super important as well. I think sometimes there's a lot going on internally and because we're such visual creatures, if we don't see it out here, we, we don't really give it as much weight, uh, importance. And so, but it is like this is the inside is where it all begins. Um, so art is a beautiful way of exploring that inner terrain and finding those little jewels and gems and pulling them out. Which actually, I have a quote to go with that. And I skipped my quotes, even though on my, on my notes I said to do quotes next. Ay, ay, ay. We know the arts can expand your mind and your horizons. It gives you a different perspective on things. I mean, I'm just thinking it's just a beautiful way to be human. And what do we need more now than to connect and to be human and to be together in our humanness? Um, I think we get 
carried away with distractions and forget that at the end of the day, we're all connected. And so I think art is a lovely way of bringing us together. Um, as far as consuming it even, not just creating it, think about how you connect with other people on maybe favorite shows or favorite piece of art or a piece of music. It really, it really can bring all of us together. So I think that's important. And it sparks the imagination and reminds us that anything is possible. I'm going to check. So far, it's saying I don't have any comments. Um, so if I have any, I apologize. I don't see them. Yes. <laughs> Another cool thing that the arts can do for us is put us into something called the flow state. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with that, the idea of a flow state. But essentially, when you're in a flow state, you are completely in the present moment. You're right at the crux of it. You are present. And, and if you've ever, I know my writers especially, for me, that's when I really can feel the flow state, is when I'm writing, I'm just essentially channeling something. And it's just, it's, it's pouring out. And you, you're thinking, where is this coming from? But it's coming out. And so, when you don't have to think too hard about it or plan it out, it just happens, you're in that flow state. And art is a beautiful way to put you there. You're playing an instrument, you're singing, you're drawing, however you want to express yourself, it can really put you there. So, quotes. I, anyone love quotes? I love quotes. So if you love quotes, I'm about to hit you with some. All right, I don't know if you're ready for this. My eight people, thank you. Thank you so much for watching, by the way. I hope everybody's doing, doing well on this Friday night. It's, it's been a long week, so hopefully this will give you some stuff to chew on, think about, maybe inspire you. So this first quote is from probably my favorite book about art. And um, actually, I want to talk more. I was going to talk about more about it later. The Artist's Way. Um, I don't know if I should get into it right now. You know what? I will get into it right now because this is important. If you haven't read The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron and you are a creative person or you want to be a creative person, you're an artist, you want to be an artist, you want to do it full time, you are just struggling, you think, oh, I've got this, this calling inside of me, this need, this desire to do art, but I feel stuck. I feel like I can't. I feel like I'm going to starve. <laughs> Just what I always thought too. It's like I can't be an artist. Um, Julia will tell you how, and she will show you. She will inspire the heck out of you. Some things. Um, I've read this twice, and I've done the process twice, and I actually still do my morning pages every morning. At least try to do it every morning. But some main takeaways from this is to write what she calls morning pages every morning. So it's three pages stream of consciousness, just getting it out on the page, getting, getting out all the gunk, all the thoughts from the night so you can start fresh. And then, oh my goodness. <laughs> she also recommends um, an artist date, which is where you go somewhere solo, which I've done, it's fun. People are like, you're all by yourself. And you're like, well, I am. <laughs> and they just think you're so brave because you're going by yourself to these to these places. I went to Nerd Night. I recommend Nerd Night, but they're not having those anymore because of things. But if you're in Orlando, that's, that's a fun event to go to um, where they discuss nerdy things. So, yes, so the artist way, she basically gets you back in touch with your inner artist, taking out that critic that's telling you you'll never make it. So this is powerful and I, I highly recommend it. So that's where the quote, this is, that's where this quote is coming from that I'm, about to, that I'm about to share with you. So her quote is, serious art is born from serious play. I'm gonna let that sink in for a second. Serious art is born from serious play. This is another thing I'm very passionate about. I'm a very playful person. I love having fun. I love the levity of life because it can also be so heavy and serious. Whew, we all know that, that, right? So 
I think it's important to find and steal those moments of laughter and joy and hold on to them and cherish them and play and remember who you were as that little kid that just drew stuff, played dress up with your friends, whatever you did, played with your G.I. Joy, G.I. Joy, joy. <laughs> G. Joe dolls, toys, no, they're not dolls, toys. I'm so sorry, everyone, G.I. <laughs> Joe toys. Um, and you used your imagination, right, to, to fill in the scene, to paint the scene. So why, why do we forget that as we grow up? I know there's a Picasso quote where he says something like, everyone's born an artist. It's just it's sort of retaining that as you get older. Um, he said it more eloquently than that. But it's true. We have it innately when we're little, and it's celebrated, and people are like, yay. And, and, and then you get older, and they say, no, be practical. So. We have to unlearn that it's okay to play and that actually play is so beneficial. It really is. Think about how it elevates your mood. It elevates the mood of others. It puts you in that flow state. So I think finding things that speak to you, that feel good, that let you express your inner child as silly and as nonsensical as it may be, that's the good stuff, and that's where you can stumble upon some really cool discoveries. Um, and that's really probably where some of the greatest artwork has been made, just artists having fun and playing, and, and they take it seriously. I take it seriously. It's, it's important, it really is, to express yourself in that way. My next quote is from Albert Einstein. He said, creativity is intelligence having fun. I like that. And especially from a genius, he's telling us that, <laughs> a literal genius, he's telling us that we need, I mean, to use that creativity. And I know he also has a quote about intuition too. So very cool guy. And why wouldn't you wanna, why wouldn't we wanna let your brain just have a field day, right? Next quote is from Thomas Merton. I believe he was a monk or something. But he said, laughter is a sunbeam of the soul. Very nice. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> Any, anybody, anyone? No comments yet. Unless I'm not, if I'm not seeing these, this is so strange. Usually I have a comment by now. Maybe someone just let me know if you can see or hear me. <laughs> I'm alive. And the last quote I've cultivated for you guys today is from this book, which is my second recommendation, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. This is um, also for my fellow artists who are struggling to live a fully creative life and feel, again, it's like the artist way. It's similar in that way. It's inspiring you and encouraging you because, gosh darn it, <laughs> the world needs you. The world needs artists. The world needs art, especially, especially now. I, I feel it in my bones. Um, how badly people need respite from the chaos and the noise. They want that symphony. They want that painting. They want that novel. They want that poem. They want whatever you have to offer. So this is a quote from Big Magic. One of the oldest and most generous tricks that the universe plays on human beings is to bury strange jewels within us all and then stand back to see if we can ever find them. That's kind of what I was saying earlier about we all have those gems inside of us, those talents. Um, I want to say the word talent meant gold or little she um, shekels, is that the right word? Um, back in biblical times, I think. Don't quote me on that. I need a history, a history major <laughs> to correct that one. Um, so yeah, that's your currency, your talent. Don't forget that. Don't sell yourself short, my fellow artists. Um, gosh, if I could be a mom to all you artists and just like tell you, do it, do it, go for it, ah, I would love that. Um, so yes, show your gems, show, show the world because it's so desperately needed. All right, does anybody have, this is where I wanted to stop, this is where in my notes I have a stopping to ask how, art, how the arts, or even laughter, we'll get into laughter here in a little bit, um, 
have helped you? Um, any thoughts on that? On how maybe art has helped you personally? Hmm. All right. Well, as you're typing, I'll assume someone's typing. <laughs> I'm going to continue. So, <clears throat> my next my next section, I was going to talk about books and their wisdom. And I already covered Big Magic and The Artist's Way. Those are two, two of my favorites, but The Artist's Way for sure. Um, another book that's fun if you're into comedy and improv is Amy Poehler's Yes, Please. I got that one on Kindle, so I don't have it, a physical copy with me. But that one's just a fun read if you, if you like comedy. Uh, and I also... This is a shameless plug, but I wrote a book about improv called Living to the Top of Your Intelligence. And I actually would like to read a little snippet because it is inspirational as well. Um, yes, I have some children's books and a poetry book, and I wasn't sure if you guys would want me to read something from those. But I thought, well, this one, this is pretty inspiring, I think. I think if we can just live moment by little moment without judgment of ourselves, others, and our situation, we can find a deep, true, everlasting happiness and peace. As the Buddha said, I'm going to paraphrase it here, all suffering is a denial of the situation as it really is. We want to change it. We want to be 10 steps ahead or two steps in the past. Either way, it doesn't matter. We are on the current step the current path for a reason. We must learn to accept it. We can't change what step we are on in the staircase of life. We must simply stand proudly on it and say, this is me, this is where I am, and own it. Because what is the alternative? To deny where you are, how far you've come, and how far you've yet to go? I mean, my goodness, we are all constantly evolving, so you might as well enjoy this stage of your evolution, young chrysalis, for one day you will fly. So that's from my improv book called Living to the Top of Your Intelligence. If you go to RebeccaPebble.com, you can um, find out where to find this on Amazon. But basically, this book is, um, it's my self-help book, basically, <laughs> using improv, because I found that... Um, with improvisational theater, I don't know how many people, how many of you are familiar with it, but it's basically life on stage because you're totally unscripted and unprepared. So you have to be open and you have to listen and you have to accept. And so I think those are some really important values to carry over from a stage into real life. Um, because really all of the things that make for a good improv scene uh, make for a good human being, or not improv scene, and a good improviser, I should say, uh, make for a good human being. Things like really listening to your partner or someone, um, things like saying yes and, which is the first tenet of improv, where you accept what someone gives you and then you add something of your own, add something of value on top of that to move the scene forward. Um, yeah, it's just, and things like don't be strangers, you're not supposed to play at strangers. So I cover all of that in my book because I really think if the world could do improv, <laughs> um, if we could just take some of those basic ideas of really, it's essentially just loving each other, accepting each other. Um, and I really, I don't know, I feel like humanity could, could be in a, a good space if we just laugh. <laughs> But I'm a dreamer. Still don't see any comments. I hope, again, I hope this is going okay. I'm, I do apologize that I keep checking, but I, again, my last two lives, I neglected the comment section for a while. I felt, I felt terrible about it. So, yes. So improv has been very healing for me. Um, this laughter, I'm about to get, actually that might be a good transition to get into the laughter portion of things. Um, but with improv, I found that, and if anyone's an improviser, let me know. I'd be curious, I'd be curious to see if there's other Stetson alum that 
decided to delve into improv. Um, because I know the theater program at the time, we didn't have any improv classes, um, but that would actually be something really cool to implement, I think. So, yes. So the laughter, I find so incredibly healing. So I think that's where I will jump into the laughter segment and um, be glad I almost got a little carried away and, and got a bunch of props. <laughs> I have a few things, but I almost, I almost really went crazy with this one, but then I said, no, Rebecca, take it easy on your poor audience. Uh, <laughs> I just, I love performing. I was going to perform for you guys and do different characters, but I'll save that. I'll save that for my YouTube channel. So, going into laughter, and we can still switch back into the arts, of course. Did you know that babies laugh, on average, 400 times a day? 400 times! Do you know how much the average adult laughs? On average, now... I think this is a high, I think this is a high average because I think I caught myself laughing today maybe twice. I don't know. Terrible. Uh, but it said adults laugh on average 15 times a day versus babies 400. So where do we lose from being a baby to being an adult? Where do we lose that joy and that laughter? Got to pick it back up. It's, a, it's really important. And I'll tell you why. I have... <laughs> I have some benefits of laughter here for you. Did you know that laughter decreases your stress levels, increases muscle relaxation, increases your pain tolerance, yikes, which I'll talk about that in a second, strengthens your immune system, helps you to connect with others, and improves your mood. Think about it, when you're laughing together and you're, you're connected, it feels so good. You just have that thing together. So the increased pain tolerance, I think about when they say laughter is the best medicine and oh my gosh, it's so true. They've done studies and it really is physically healing. It's incredible. And I'm sure everyone knows this. Everyone who's laughed before, if you're a human, you've experienced that, the, the miraculous healing nature of laughter, just that release. And um, so movies like Patch Adams was a really good example of that. Um, a metaphor that I like to use, I create a whole YouTube video about this, but is um, called laughing through the haunted house because I do not like scary things and haunted houses and so somebody gave me the advice that if you laugh, they'll leave you alone. And so I started by freaking out and screaming and holding on tight. <laughs> And they would come at me in the haunted house, right, with the chainsaw and everything, and oh, just making it so much worse. But then I decided that, okay, I'm just gonna laugh, even though I'm terrified, I'm going to laugh through the haunted house. And sure enough, as soon as I did that, the actors left me alone. And so I thought, that's kind of a cool metaphor for life in a way. If we can just laugh, laugh through some of the pain, um, laugh through life a little more. I mean, you can't always laugh, obviously, but um, try to increase your moments of laughter. Um, I really think what a what an amazing world we live in. Um, I don't I don't think we laugh enough, you know. And so maybe think about what shows or what movies or what activities or people you can surround yourself with that bring that joy and that bring that laughter to you. Um, any comments, questions so far before I move on? Because I do, I wanted to do a laugh chat segment where you guys tell me some of your favorite TV shows, movies, music, anything, people, places, activities, whatever that bring you laughter so that we can see. Maybe there's some stuff in the area. Maybe there's um, a movie we, we should watch. Um, but something, <laughs> something I found and from when I was a kid, I found this board game. Trivial Pursuit SNL Edition. And my favorite part are the little characters that come with it. 
I have to show you guys this. If anyone's an SNL nerd like I am, I'm a 90s SNL girl. That's when they did a lot of um, really outlandish characters. Uh, and it used to be my dream. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little Rebecca Pebble secret. I had a dream of being on SNL. I don't know if that dream's probably gone now, but... Who knows? Maybe it'll maybe it'll revitalize itself. So look at these little guys. Does anyone remember Coneheads? I don't know if you can see this very well. <laughs> these are so cute. I wish I could sort of set them somewhere so you can see them. This is my favorite SNL character, Matt Foley. Does anyone remember Matt Foley? You be living in a van down by the river. These are great. Anybody else love SNL? Just me. Here's the ladies' man with his gavassier. <laughs> I think that's what he said. He's better one. I love that. Spartan cheerleader. Okay, these are all iconic. I tell you what, who doesn't love the Spartan cheerleaders? <sighs> so good. This is this is SNL's golden golden age and before too when, you know, Steve Martin and Chevy Chase and stuff. So I, I can't dismiss that era. That's awesome too. And Mango, which Chris Kattan, I was trying to Google what, what happened to him. Uh, he's not acting anymore. So I love, love the old school SNL. Those, those are characters and sketches. Can't really see them there now. But those are characters and sketches that usually I can just watch. I can just go on YouTube if I'm having a bad day and just watch and laugh and feel better. Um, I kind of recommend that to people, finding things that you know will make you laugh. And then if you're, if you're just in a funk or something, just watch that or listen to it or whatever it might be. Uh, yeah, but I'd love to know if you guys have any favorite characters, um, favorite stuff, favorite stuff. Um, let's see, I'm gonna consult my notes to make sure there's nothing else. I'm going to make sure that I didn't mess up the comment section and I'm missing a bunch of comments because there still aren't any. Um, but I know I've got people watching, so that's good. As long as you can hear me and see me. Let's see, any other stuff? Hmm. Gosh, there's just so much, there really is. I mean, I could talk about this for days, but I really just, I guess I want to say if you're an artist, keep going. What you're doing is important and essential because that's my next point, that art is essential uh, for the, the soul, the spirit. Um, because really, what's the point of living if, that sounds terrible, but if, if life is dull and, and if it's just this sort of monochromatic wasteland without art? <laughs> I don't know, that's what I'm imagining it, just being so incredibly co colorless and lifeless. Um, and there's a quote that's something like, uh, life without music would be a mistake. And that's a big, that gets a big amen from me. So, any comments, questions? I think I'm going to wrap it up here. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with my obsession with all of the arts. Again, I try to do as much as I can. Uh, I try to write, I try to paint, I try to sing and write music, and um, hopefully I'll have some more stuff coming out soon. But if you want to see what I do, RebeccaPebble.com. Any questions or comments before I say goodbye? Uh, this has been such a joy, and I really appreciate Stetson letting me host these. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, yeah. All right, everyone. Well, I think I think that's all for now. I hope everyone's well. Please take care of yourselves. And if you're a fellow artist and you would like to connect with me, maybe collaborate. I do collaborations all the time. That's like my favorite thing. And I hope more artists do that because I think two minds and two sets of talents and tools is so much more powerful than one. So any medium, if you're an artist, and uh, you like what I do, please go to my website, RebeccaPebble.com, and let's connect. All right, thank you, everyone. I hope everyone has a wonderful Friday night. Take care and be well. Bye, guys.